This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by My Body Model. Create a custom design template based on your body measurements using this custom app created especially for garment stitchers. Get 15% off the app when you go to mybodymodel.com and enter code SEWHERE at checkout. Now through February 9th, 2019. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello and welcome to the podcast. This is Mallory Donahue. This is ZD Donahue. And today we are going to address some questions that we've gotten recently in the group about the Made to Measure leggings class. We're talking about leggings? What? Imagine that! I know. And you know, so the bonus material for the zine this month is making your leggings into stockings. Right. It's a hack. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we make a lot of leggings. Just, if anybody's angry over it, they can just die mad. Okay? They can, uh, just <laughs> you know, I wear a lot of leggings. <laughs> I, I actually, I swear it's all I wear anymore. I, I do wear a lot. Now, I mean. I wore a pair of jeans like a week or so ago, and I was just miserable. So we were And they even had like the power, the like power mesh uh, waistband, yeah. And I'm just like, no, I need something that feels like baby skin up against me. <laughs> <laughs> we were planning out content in March is the month of making jeans, and Zidi's like, oh. I don't have to do anything for that. I said, you didn't show them the power mesh waistband I put on my jeans. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, which which Kim also did, too. So Right. We, yes, yes. That's I just want to give her a little shout out there. Yes. Okay. So, oh, you know, one question that I've gotten, we got this at the beginning, like when we first released this class, and people are like, are there any written instructions? And there are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I, maybe I can try and make the header a little no uh, we do it, it they're called esp leggings yes. we send you mental no well, i'm this sorry is, you know this is yeah. great this is a good question it because is. it is sort of and, and i'll attest to this sometimes it's easier to just make a video upload it and say good luck everybody just watch the video right right but the drafting process is written down and also writing stuff down takes so much longer oh, yeah. than videoing it for, that's for, for sure me, yeah. especially with something like this right you know right um Okay, you also read this instruction. We have it as an MP3. I don't know if you remember. I do remember. Okay. <laughs> so, it was a long read. So yeah. There are there are three ways to like, you know, internalize this information. It is outlined. The one thing we know is everyone learns differently and yes. takes in information in different ways and, you know. And like I would want it written down. Did I enjoy yeah. writing it down? No, that was the hard thing. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like it. Uh, Although I tend to be like very auditory like an when someone yeah. says something, I can remember it. I can remember hearing that. Well, you know? I like it because I like to listen to podcasts and stuff while right. I'm on the lawn. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I think to myself, oh, if there's something I'm going to go learn, I could listen to this while I'm doing something else and just be right. primed for right. it. Right. You know? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or at least introduced to it. And yeah. I listen to like marketing podcasts and stuff. Right. And so I'm like, oh, when I go in, I'm going to change my hashtag, whatever, you know, uh, right. <laughs> I'm going to do that later, you know, so. Okay, so there are written instructions in the first module of the course, FYI. And then a question that has come up. How, how do you access them in the first module? Yeah, yeah. It it's says, in the first module. It says written instructions and supply lists, and it is and called there. like course outline. Okay. So I will, I think I'm going to go in there though and just make sure that it's a little, a little more evident. Okay. I think uh, that would be helpful. Okay. Question from someone. They said, my front rise and my back rise are the same. So they turned out to be the same number. Yes. Basically. And they said, could this be possible? And we were like, yes. It yay. is. And this it's is very much. This yes. is why you're drafting your own leggings. Well, and, and, the, and the reason you're probably confused mm -hmm. is you've been using like a commercial plat pattern uh -huh. and none of them will have it the same. No, no, they won't. And uh, because why will they not? Well, they have somehow come up with what they believe is an average body shape. Sure. And they think that your back rise is bigger than your front rise. Here's what's funny. A lot of times people's front rise is bigger. Yeah. Well, it just depends. Also, you are. we recommend making your first pair go up to your natural waist. Right. Which is like your body's smallest part. Right. Now, some people like hate this. Some people rejoice. I love it. I'm it's like, just a really good spot to good... start from. You do not have to wear the pants yeah. from there. But 
it it's a good measurement. Yes, yes. Um, so you are you're measuring basically the distance, sort of like from your crotch line up to your waist. Right. So just think about it. When these pattern companies are drafting, they've decided the typical body shape that the butt area right. is rounder, is bigger, rounder than the tummy area, which would area. make it longer or more uh -huh. of a rise. Yeah, and that's not always true. And yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that are the same. I'm I was very the same. similar. And yeah. then okay, when I was pregnant. My front rise was it's much taller. Much taller. Mm -hmm. And then I rem I don't remember exactly what date it was, but uh, I don't know, a few months after I was Started pregnant. going down. Okay. Deflating. Now it's, now it's a little bit more even. Right. And then I just redrafted to make my stockings. Uh -huh. And it, it's just like an inch. My front rise is just an inch lower or so. Right. Then my back. Now, if you're someone who's got a rather large bum, and that is what you find to be difficult to get fitted to cover, right? You know, um, in your in your pants or in your ready to wear, you know, in what you make. Sorry, in your I said pants, I meant patterns. In your patterns or in your ready to wear, you may find that you're going to have this back rise that looks so much taller than anything right. you've seen printed out. And it probably, and it probably is. is. And, and so it, that yeah. that's the thing. When when you're drafting to your body, it's going to be your body and not some imaginary, like, you know, average, you know, yeah, average. middle of the road body that you know a, a company has to draft for and they, they, have that, to, they, do, they have to they have to come out somehow come up with a model that right. they're going to cover they have to draft for something right you know they gotta they gotta they're, i mean they're not expecting that pattern to always fit you they know you're right. gonna have to alter it yes no that's very true okay so it is okay with that front and back rise just give it a shot and and if you really if you're really questioning it and you think i couldn't be the same check your math check your yeah. measurement yeah and that's one where you don't actually do anything to the number right it is taking the measurement and so let's just segue into measuring the rise okay. yeah and don't sit on your bathtub <laughs> right i can't remember who it was we're not we're not it's someone who's very active in the group right and she just bought the class and we have you measure your front and back rise separately okay standing standing and you put like a yoga block or a book between your legs okay you create like this flat line that's going underneath that's your parallel, crotch. Right, that's parallel to your crotch in the floor. Yes. So it is not straddling a bathtub. That's too low. You could straddle like a sawhorse, okay? <laughs> but you got to be standing, okay? <laughs> you like that? You like that? Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. You know how that's like when you fall on the bar of the bicycle? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what I was thinking like, of. Okay, but if you have a balance beam right. or something, that would – that position of your body that is going to change the measurement you right get. it does um so then we have you you we have you measure the front and the back and that tape measure it gets to go over the curve of your that's right bum gets to go over the curve of your right. belly right now it doesn't extend all the way down into like the four corners right okay that happens a different way okay right. you have, you got to buy the class to find out that information <laughs> <laughs> so don't don't straddle your bathtub uh, to do that, okay. Unless it's exactly the shape and height of a sawhorse. Unless you have a, maybe maybe they have one of those step in the step in the the high the high okay. walled. Those are marketed, you know, to older people or people with mobility issues. Uh -huh. But I'm like, that is an indoor hot tub. I would take it any day, <laughs> and I would love. And then people are like, oh, it takes so long to fill up. I'm like, I'd get in there. I'd wait. I'd well, read a you book. know, it doesn't <laughs> take that long to fill up because the seat is molded out of, out it, of it in a sense, so you're not filling up like. The full five feet of a bathtub. All right, sort of. even yeah. more reason. I'm all. Yeah. I, Plus, the seats are heated sometimes. You know, it depends on. They have different things. Like, stop they have it. jets or heated seats. Stop and, it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I want one even more now. Yeah, I know. Well. Okay. Yeah, well, sell a few more leggings classes. Okay, Maybe yeah, everybody buy the leggings class and I can avoid the, my um, <laughs> walk in. My bathtub. My bathtub. walk in bathtub. And. Okay, this is something that is coming up in my mind that uh, I was maybe going to tack on the end, but I think it relates to this. Let's pretend your rise is way too tall. You somehow measured it, and you put on your leggings, and they go up to your shoulders. Yeah. What of it? Just cut them off. Cut it okay? off. <laughs> cut them off, and now you know. Okay. <laughs> well, and that's what happens when we say measure from the waist. You, we've got you've got to have a reference point. Yes. So that's what you know, and making it the waist is a very good idea. And you could cut it off, everybody. Yeah. 
you you'll you'll be able to cut it off. And and okay? you will you will transfer that to your pattern. Right. Your first one is this your, is this is your sloper. Is your sloper okay. Your this muslin, this yeah. is your body. This is the shape of your body. This is not your pattern that you're right. making. Yeah. So you you're working to get there. It's that measurement is that height there. Right. It's not going to be a huge deal. Or you can say, oh, I did it too short. Next time I'm right. a little taller. That's one place on the pattern where it's. It's a little less hard to, yeah, you know, it's correct. Not, it's not difficult to and, alter at all. Yes. Um, uh, one other question we got. We include a gritted, gritted, gridded drafting guide in the class. It's right. a big copy shop, huge file. It's a, it's a download. Okay. Yeah. That, that you can get printed. And it is gridded paper um, on which you can, you know, draft your leggings. And someone was like, do I have to use this? I already have a grid. I... I have but gridded paper. Do I, I need gridded paper? paper or whatever. No. No. You don't have to use it. No. So it was a request. Actually, after the Easy Tea class, people were like, oh, I see that you're using gridded paper. a grid. Right. Um, and it makes me think, oh, do I have to have a grid? It does. You know, you know it so. does help a lot of people keep wines level, mm -hmm. things like that. But you do not have to have it. In no. fact, what was it that I, that time at Baby Lock, remember I was... I was you drafting on a big poster, post okay. uh, yeah, yeah. A big poster paper, <laughs> like that. It actually had notes on the other yeah. side of it. It was really trash. Yeah, you can, yeah. and and people have been bringing up some people. I don't, I don't think I'd like this. I honestly have never done it. They like to trace onto those um, shower curtains or plastic things. Yeah. It's not something that I would want to do, but yeah. some people love it. So yeah. you can trace onto whatever you want. Okay. Um, that it, And I think actually since I went back and looked at the first module to make sure there were written instructions, it says optional. It says gridded. Yeah. Gridded drafting sheet optional. Okay. So you do not have to use that. Um, and then I think we're going to take a break and then come back and talk about some other cool stuff that you can do with your leggings. <laughs> This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by My Body Model. And Mallory's going to tell me all about My Body Model. Yeah, so I was kind of trying to explain this to Mom. Yeah. And then I thought, let's just turn on the record Explain button. it out loud. <laughs> so My Body... Hey, we have a podcast. We have a podcast with these microphones here. So My Body Model is a web-based app. It was designed by Erica Schmitz, and she is okay. a super smart awesome woman who crowdfunded this project we helped her out with that uh, -huh. uh last year and now they're releasing a new version it's new and improved oh okay. okay so this app exists on the web and then you go there and you buy credits to create your body model okay? so it's like buying time kind of or? sort of yeah and so you know you can buy one credit you can buy three credits the best value is to buy five credits uh -huh. okay and then you input your measurements, and it creates a croquis. Which, right. Okay, which was which, a croquis. Which, which is an outline of your body, a, a two-dimensional yep. model of your body yes. so that you can draw onto it. Yeah, so you can sketch onto that. You can right. imagine onto it. You can test out things like colors or shapes on your body. Well, okay? and I, people have probably seen... Um, some of my drawings that I've posted, yeah, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm thinking about making this costume and I, and I, and Here I, you go. And, and I do that for other people. Uh huh. So I like sort of croquis them. So right? we have four credits waiting for us Ooh. at My Body Model Mom. So one for me, one for you. Okay. And then I'm actually supposed to costume a two person show coming oh, really? up here. So I'm excited. So there is a discount before we get too far into this. I'm going to say this before we continue our conversation. You can get 15% off your order from My Body Model. You go to mybodymodel.com. And when you check out, Use the code so here. That's S E W H E R E, and you're gonna get fifteen percent off your oh, purchase. Wow! Okay? Well, now buy that, as many as you can. That's then, right. Because you'll get that. You'll get a really good. Yeah, you rate. can get you can get the fifteen percent off all yeah. of your credits. So it could be like for you. It could be for your right. family. You could buy one for yourself now, and then that credit stays there. Oh, it does. In case you change shape or ah, something, you know. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. So the credits, um, the sale of the credits is how the um, the app is supported, and it's how Erica it keeps can going, make, right? Uh, can continue to make improvements, right. et cetera, to it. The new version has a couple new body measurements oh, okay. to add to cr increase sure. accuracy. And Erica's also working toward making the app more inclusive to include. Um, 
right now I think it's sort of geared toward the traditional, you know, female body shape. Uh-huh. And um, I'm interested to see how it responds to sure. some of the more traditional male body shapes. And um, so she's working on that. So I'd love to see her. She's really made a wonderful contribution, I think, to the sewing space. Yes. Uh, her Instagram, her newsletter, it's all about people getting comfortable with trying new stuff on their bodies, right. which I think is so right. fabulous. Okay, so once again, mybodymodel.com and use code SOHERE for 15% off your purchase now through February 9th, 2019. Thanks, Thanks my, my body, body model. model. So, 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 sewing out loud. All right, Mom. What kind of fabrics have you used to make your leggings? I have used four-way stretch, and I have used the one-way or two-way stretch. I've used, so, four-way stretch or just the east-west stretch. So, yeah, you you have used a fabric now, with no vertical stretch? Now, th- yes. Now, this is what's really important here. We talked about how you go all the way up to your waist. Yeah. <laughs> that you really need if you're going to do something that's not four-way stretch. That you need because you need that length because that's where you, you know, you move up and down right. and you change basically the length of the garment when you while you're wearing it. Okay, and this is where I was coming from with, if you make a pair of leggings and you measure to your natural waist, you make it out of double brushed poly that's super duper stretchy. Right. Okay. I always end up cutting a bit more off my waist on a pair that is made of super stretchy fabric. Yes. And then if I, like this, I'm wearing these cotton spandex ones and it just doesn't have quite as much vertical stretch. Right. Okay. They're perfect because it's <clears throat> made to my body. Yeah. I, I know, like, the. Lycra product that is exactly right for yeah. my leggings uh-huh. pattern, you know, and if I divert from it, I know I may have to make make a little bit of an adjustment or my waistband might wind up a little too high. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll wear it. Yeah. I go ahead and wear it because I, I almost always put the power mesh waistband in. Yeah. Um, so I will go ahead and wear it and I'll go, you know, this is a little too high. And then I'll go ahead and I'll wash them. And then I'll alter them, which, yeah. is, which is only really, it's, you know, taking the seam up. It's totally okay right. to alter your leggings after you wear them for a little bit. Like, right. don't – and you didn't fail, and, you know, right. you're just, oh, I, want, I like this little shorter. I mean, to me, I've worn, I've worn self-sewn clothing that I've altered – later on for all sorts of reasons well you know, just, i i my body's changed and yeah. i went back and, and changed them an extra button or, right right or whatever yeah that's yeah. that's totally okay um and you brought up the power mesh waistband right or power net whatever We're power not, mesh power net yeah it, technically it's, the it's, fabric used is power shaper net right um, you do want to use something rather stable it's pretty strong stuff it is and it is um it will create this wider, what's sometimes called like a yoga waistband. Uh-huh. Um, or a yoke. Or a yoke. And there's a blog post already on that. And, you know, now, ZD and I, we don't make leggings any other. We don't, I don't no. finish my waistband any other way. Like, no, that's I how I, like I re- to do Yeah, it. I just don't. Yeah. You do the elastic. We show you how to do the elastic. Right. Elastic goes in there because you need some stabilization at yes. the waistband. Now, there are people that don't put elastic there. I I need it. I like it. The leggings I'm wearing right now, they're my most updated black cotton spandex 14 ounce from L.A. Finch <laughs> Fabrics, and they're my favorite. Yeah. And uh, I just freaking love them. I need to make like 16 more pairs because I wear them like every day. Um, So <laughs> they are. You can fall asleep in them too. Yes, you can. And wear actually, them. I'm sort and of. Wear them too, especially when the wind chill is minus 27. That's right. I go to bed sometimes I'm like, oh, I should take these off just because I'm. Yeah. Like, Wear them again tomorrow, so maybe they need to breathe a little bit, you know. <laughs> maybe I should wash them. Maybe I should wash these. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, it's okay to alter them, like, afterwards. And that power mesh waistband or that traditional, like, one-inch elastic waistband. Right. I mean, you just hack it off lower and reapply the waistband. Like, right. it's not a big deal. It's, right. It's totally okay. Um, so don't don't be afraid of that. Well, and you may like different waistbands for different activities or different functions or different fabrics right or different fabrics you know i wear leggings to swim in because i have had uh, melanoma and i so i cover up i wear swim pants basically Mm -hmm. i'm i'm all covered up i wear a long sleeve swimming suit and a or a rash guard and um 
leggings that are, you know, yeah. all the way down. So sometimes I will put a shorter power mesh waistband uh -huh. on that because okay. I'm wearing it a lot of times over a swimming suit and I feel like I don't need that big thick one yeah, that I usually like when I'm doing like aerial. Right. So it's, you know, things things can change. And so I wrote a blog post on how to make them for uh, a pregnant person. Right. Okay. Like when actually I was really pregnant when we were doing this class and we were like making the class and I just used a fabric waistband. You weren't a little bit pregnant. I wasn't a little bit. I mean, you when I really stay a pregnant. lot pregnant, I get really big when I'm pregnant. So, I mean, that's we tend what to I get mean. huge. <laughs> I looked at those pictures and I was like, people ask us if we're going to have, when, like, like, we're like four months pregnant, and people go, "Oh, what are you doing?" And they're like, "Oh, I thought you'd no, say in two weeks." So yeah, like, we yeah. went to Common Threads in June that year, and people were like, "Oh my gosh, are you do like next month?" I was doing <laughs> September. I was doing November. October. You were doing no, no, it's doing October, October, and I had the baby in September, and so yeah, we yeah. we just for some reason our frames, the belly just pops. Well, we're kind way of out. we're not tall people, right? Yeah, it just pops way out. So those pictures is like it looks like. A joke. It no. looks like yeah. I'm pretending to be like I put a basketball, right? Or not a basketball, like a very large beach ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I talked to you though about doing that, and I made these leggings go up over my belly, right? So that's how I liked them, right? But if you want to do that power mesh waistband, you could put it low. Yeah. Now some people belly. with the pregnant belly or a belly, just yeah. uh, not pregnant any belly. belly, any kind of belly, like it under the belly. It drives me absolutely insane. I don't. I, can, I yeah. it, it just drives me insane. I and people will see me with it over the belly, and they're like, "How can you no, stand that?" So people, it's yes, definitely like, a personal preference. Yes. Yeah. Some people are like Mallory. I don't know how you can stand that up that high because yeah. it's like right under my boobs. Right. You know. So I can wear my bikini underwear, but my pants had to come up over. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I understand. So. Yeah, you get, but you get to decide. You get to kind of play with this, and that's can, why you sew. That's right, and it's this, these leggings are made of such stretchy fabric that you get to kind of play around with this. And there are only, I guess you could say, there are two or three seams, depending on how you do right. with your leggings, right? Um, but those are the seams where you get to alter, right? Okay, so you know you could take it up a little bit up near the waist if you needed to. Um, uh, the other thing is, ZD, you lost some inches. Right. Right? Well, not only that, but I mean, I actually kind of, I actually got more of a butt. Okay. Like I got bigger. Your my body just changed. I got bigger glutes because my glutes got muscular, more uh -huh. muscular, you know. So I changed the shape. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like thinner or, well, and you know, that when somebody says that, and I've had that happen to me. Oh, well, I'm going to buy a wedding dress, but I'm losing weight. What size? Well, pfft. I don't know. You don't know. Because, you gonna it, because weight? yeah, Where because gonna, yeah. everybody changes shape in a different way. Absolutely. And you know, um, like it's funny because like my back is taller. Uh huh. Like in my shoulders because I got I did, grew because she I got all these back down. muscles. Except, uh, you know. I'm smaller here. It's it's very weird. I just changed. It's like I was silly putty and somebody reshaped me. Uh -huh. okay. In a good way, thank you. Yes. In a way that thank you, God. you in a way getting, I, getting I I am happy about. Yes, yeah, I good, am happy. Good, good. There's more muscle. So and that's another thing. If you are firm or if you are gushy, and sometimes your body's gushy in one place or firm in one okay, place. That is a blog post that I'm doing this month. Is and it? it's gonna be called The Gushiness of You. Yes. I love this topic. I cannot wait to write a big old blog post about where you're squishy, where you're hard, yeah. why that might matter, why it might not. It really makes a ma it makes a big difference on maybe how tight you're going to make mm -hmm. that that mesh waistband, mm -hmm. or you know maybe not tight at all, yeah. or, or or whatever. So um, you know your body gushes. Are, yeah, sometimes if you make like that too tight. You know, all the gushiness will come up, and you'll yeah. have this big bubble on top well, of your pants. The other blog post I'm going to do is about shapewear, and like you need to decide what goals you're trying to accomplish. Right. And, and well, anyway, okay, right. We're getting off topic, but the, yes, we're I'm off so topic. excited. I'm so excited about uh, that. Mallory and I got off a topic. Does, does oh, is anybody is believe that? I, I do want to say you said you make swim leggings, right? Okay, and one of our members, okay, I think it's Marnie who says this. 
she says, she's like, I made my own Spanx, basically. Uh-huh. So she yeah. does a high-waisted, like, power mesh waistband, and she cuts the leggings off. Right. You know, Gives herself, a, like, a bike short. A short. Yeah. And she's like, this is my shapewear. These are my, she calls them her Spanx. Right. And I'm like, oh, yeah, so you can decide how tight you want it to be. Well, how yes. Whatever. What a- kind a- of fabric? What and color? And I wear a bike short under dresses uh-huh. but mine aren't really Spanx. Yeah. They're, yeah, just, they're just Yeah, I I don't like that. Shorts, I don't right? like that tightness. Uh-huh. I don't want the tightness. If anything it would push my gush up, you right. know, push the gush. But um so yes, you can make underwear out of these. Yeah, you you can just wear these as as underwear. You know, you can definitely do that. You can wear them as pajamas. You can do it. Someone asked about uh rayon spandex. Uh-huh. And in the class, you can leave comments and I'll right. answer your questions. And I, she said that she had made a rayon spandex dress and that it really grew on her. So she yeah, was that worried happens. about the leggings. Mm-hmm. And I said, I think I know what kind of rayon spandex you're talking about. Right. Because that does not give you all the information you need, right? Right. Fiber content. No. It could be a thin rayon spandex. Right. It could be very stable, right. thick rayon spandex. There's performance wear yeah. rayon spandex. Yes. There's ponty, you know. Right. There's, right. Uh, okay, so... So I said, I think I know what you're talking about, the rather thin, kind of slinky stuff. And that stuff will, I I can imagine it kind of sagging right. in the leggings after being right. worn a couple times. Maybe yeah, you, you do Maybe want you something do. with good recovery because this is good. Your, your knees are going to bend. Your uh-huh. butt might bend. Whatever, you know, punch out, so to speak. You know, yeah. you're punching into the fabric. And, you, you know, usually you don't. And these days we don't have to put up with that. No. Used to, that is what happened. You yeah. had baggy knees. Yes. You know, you, you couldn't do anything. That's why stirrup pants came in, so that you wouldn't have baggy knees. Right. Because it would, they would sort it of would like pull tight. Down. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, and fabric does matter. Uh huh. Um, for instance, I would not make my swim pants out of what you have on right now. The That's cotton. Right. It holds too much water. Mm-hmm. Because I would get out and I would stay wet forever. You would get bees. Be, yeah, um, I, I would be heavier saturated. too. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I, I, you know, I would make it out of a nylon or, or a um, poly that would let go of water. That would let go of water, right? And maybe oftentimes be labeled as ideal swim, for swimwear, swim you know? or active right. wear. Yeah, right. no, that's a really that's a really good point. Um, the other question we've got is, can I make these if I don't have a serger? And the question, no. <laughs> You can't. <laughs> no. I won't let you. It's against no. It's against. It's against the law. I yes. We were sewing knits long before there were sergers were around for in the home right, and, right. And in the class, we show you how we to make show them you both ways and talk the, about it. Yes. We talk about the threads. We talk needles. about the needles. We talk about everything you need to know. I would think, even if you didn't sew, you could almost make them. Except you might not, you know. Some of the vocabulary might be out of your realm. Yeah, we don't really go into, like, how to thread your sewing right, machine, right? Right, right, okay. right. But this or is... Or, like, if you don't know what polyester means, then, you know, yeah, this is a we class, don't explain that. This is a class, though, that does, I think, give a pretty good intro to knits. And I really, really think you can be um, maybe not a beginner-beginner sewer, but you can be pretty close. You know, you don't even have to be intermediate. I think it's something because... The fit is easy. It is. So if you... If I think you, you can be quite successful. If you have, like, bought the class and you've, quote, messed these up, okay? <laughs> like, I just had somebody email and be like, oh, I got the Easy Tea class and I don't even want to show you what I did to it. Like, and I was like, no, show me. I will help you. You know, you can ask You can ask for help. Right. We will you, help you, you can help. And actually, the Cell Zone Wardrobe Facebook page, you know... Everybody's done something in their weird or oh, not. Yeah. Either they've oh, been yeah. successful or not. Now, Megan's always successful with her yoga clothes and stuff. Yeah. She always looks perfect. So, so don't ask her because she has no problems. Uh, yeah, but, I'd say the biggest. You know, people will say, this happened to me uh-huh. and this is what I did. I would say the biggest challenge is the crotch curve. Yeah. Okay. And. We'll help you out with it. Yep. You can show us a picture of your draft. Um, you know, that's not a problem. But, man, we have, we've made leggings for people of all different shapes and sizes. Yes. Um, and then people of all different shapes and sizes have made leggings using this. So, uh, And then once you have this down and you're using this knit fabric that gives you all this 
forgiveness. Yes. You know, uh, once you have this down, you can do the fun stuff like the power net waistband. You can make your own stockings. Um, I would say for somebody <laughs> even who hasn't uh-huh. experimented with knits, this might be kind of a fun place to go mm-hmm. because we really walk you through step by step. Oh, and another question that came up recently is, Will this work for kids, especially my young child who's like a giraffe? So I envision a slender, tall child. And that is who a lot of people tend to start sewing for, kids that are too tall uh, for the clothes. Because, of course, if you're too short, you can kind of just roll things up. or Yeah, you know, it's a little easier. And yes. Right. uh, Fred has made some. Well, and it doesn't even have to be what I would call a tall kid. It could be a kid that just tends to grow upward for a while and not outward. Right. Like that's how you guys all grew. Like, I swear Hillary wore a size two for like four years. But she just but, grew But up. I just have kept kept having to add lengths. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, so they work for kids. Once you have the class, you can make it for kids. You can make it for, um, you know, use it for athletic wear, whatever. Um, actually, Uriah from our yep. acro class, he just uh, commented on our video and was like, I want to make these for myself for acro. So That's they're right. appropriate for any genitalia. And I've made plenty of men's yep. leggings and um, bike shorts out of them and swim pants and... All sorts of uh, things. Yeah. So yes, they are, they definitely are Costumes. applicable. Um, and you can get the class at sewhere.com slash leggings in That's case right. you haven't said that. I don't know what ad's going to run in this podcast. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, I think that answers just some of the more current questions. I have. Oh, I have, uh, there's I another have, one. I have another. There's oh, another hacks. hack? Well, one of the hacks I've done is made a cat suit. Oh, yeah. So I've taken le- a leotard top. Uh-huh. You can even, you know, any top that would fit you close fitting if you had like a tank suit top. Mm-hmm. But I have taken a leotard and the leggings and you know, merge them, them in up. the middle. Right. Well, right. we're gonna have to do a blog post about that. Right. About that cat suit because I think we need maybe a little bit more visuals. Are there any other hacks you've got there? No, I no, I well, we, I, I don't see any on the list. I'm sure okay. somebody can come up with some. Well, can't and we they? have more to publish too, like other things, you know, to add on. So that well, and you did the up. color block thing. Mm-hmm. You t- I did you, the side you, seam, right? Which can turn into the color block. Yeah. You yeah. can you can piece these babies together however you want. You can piece. Lycra together before you cut them out, and then cut them out if you want. Actually, Whatever. I need to do a blog post on a different type of color blocking that I did with Stacy that one day. That's so there's right. There's just so many. You know, if you like the aesthetic look of some ready to wear leggings, right? Y- you, you can, can copy just about it. anything, right? Yeah, absolutely. If you if you get the color fabric you want and everything, you'll be able What's to do funny it. What's funny is I tend not to copy and do my own thing. That is I, so I feel, funny. I'm I feel not like mom. You're so yeah. Creative. I feel like you know. <laughs> I was like, oh, I could make the No, I want to make them like I want to make them. Yeah. yeah, so if you have any other questions, though, I thought these were some sort of unique things that were coming up uh, right. recently, maybe with newer people to the class and to the group. And I, I'm, I, I love it. I love that so many people have found it so useful. So. And Zelda wears a lot of leggings. That's Mallory's little girl. Yes. You know, the thing I like about leggings is then, like, as they grow out of them in the winter, they become a little bit shorter, and then they're capris for That's the summer. Right. And um, we also tend to um, use these as swimsuit leggings because yeah. we do cover our kids up in the sun. Yeah, we're we're really covered up since uh, ZD had her uh, melanoma. And we have a podcast about that. You can look back and, and see our swimwear and It's podcast. about rash guard yeah. and your um, fabric and... Okay, so you can join in the fun. You can go to sewhere.com slash leggings, and ZD teaches you how to measure yourself, draft your leggings, um, sew them on whatever equipment you have. We don't cover sewing them by hand, uh, but you can probably infer. <laughs> have fun. Have fun. Have fun. Uh, okay. right have fun. Uh, and you can visit us on Instagram. We are at sewhere.com. Uh, you can email me at mallory at sewhere.com. And so long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.